The waters surrounding the Florida Keys are a world-renowned destination for fishing, but beneath the surface lies a new world of challenges for spear fishermen. Among the most difficult creatures to spear is the elusive wahoo. With its speed and cunning instincts, the wahoo has earned a reputation as one of the most challenging fish to spear around the globe. But for those who are up to the task, the thrill of the hunt and the satisfaction of a successful trip make all of the difficulties worth it. You're gonna take the little boat out and try to get some wahoo. Going out to shoot some wahoo. We are heading out to do a little bit of wahoo spear fishing. It is frigid, all right? But that doesn't stop us. We're going out. We're gonna go shoot a massive wahoo. We're going out to shoot a couple wahoo today. You've just spent the last six hours freezing your ass off staring at blue nothingness. Out of nowhere, this wahoo cruises right into your spread. You carefully inch close enough to take a shot, and it's now or never. How'd I miss? We've literally been on the spot for maybe a minute and a half. And they're like, oh man, they gotta be here, it's covered in bait, it's covered in bait. And then Justin starts yelling, dad goes down, and it just doesn't happen. I oh took my, my, God, my throw flasher out and I was shaking it like this. And he came back, turned broadside, and I freaking missed. Ugh, it was sick. Fortunately, the story doesn't always end like this. Sick. Ah! Guys, those seven fish took us six months to shoot. My buddy went out and shot six in one day a couple weeks back. It's just sometimes it is fantastic and other days it's you know you're lucky to see one. So because seeing these fish in the water is so rare I'm gonna spend the rest of this video voicing over a handful of these dives we did pointing out what we did right and what we did wrong. Because if you can avoid our mistakes, your odds of getting one in the boat are much higher. Alright guys, in this first clip, you can see here on the top of the screen, I got a wahoo checking out our flasher rig and swimming away from me. Kind of just slowly cruising towards him, shaking that throw flasher with my left hand. And you can hear the motor going, the person driving the boat had kind of hit the throttle a little bit too hard. and. When it makes that higher higher revving noise, that really pushes the fish away. They kind of lose interest in what's going on here because they really associate that that noise with people. So I come up, I throw that throw flasher pretty much as hard as I can, and I really want to let it sink. Um, I, you can see here I'm giving it some time. I'm not swimming right up on it as fast as I can. And I'm really just, I want that fish to see that throw flasher and not see me. You can see here, I'm just now getting into where I can see that throw flasher. And I start getting the gun ready. And you can see just to the left of the throw flasher, you're going to see the fish for a second. Take a quick duck dive. Steady the gun. You can see the fish got between me and the throw flasher, and I take a shot. It was a body shot, which isn't ideal, but it is a good holding shot. I'm close enough to the throw flasher that I can dive down and grab it. see that that buoy taken off 
kind of got a little bit of a tangle with the other line, so we're swimming after it, trying to get it untangled. So you're you're going to see we get tangled up in this monofilament line here that someone had snagged on a buoy and really had just left a couple hundred yards of line just sitting out there. And if that's not going to get caught up on us, it's going to get caught in somebody's prop. It's really just not ideal and... You know, it's just a reminder to the divers out there, keep that knife on you because you never know where you're going to get tangled up in somebody's line. It can be at the bottom of the reef, on a wreck, or even at the surface. Here's my brother going down to put a second shot in this fish. Taking his time. Really want to... The second shot, you have a much better odds of getting a head shot, so you definitely don't want to mess up any meat in the second shot here. Fuck yeah, baby! <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah! Solo fish came in, and he was looking really, you know, like he wasn't gonna do it. He came into the flashers, I dove on him, and then he skirted away pretty quick. Um, I shot back out, um, I threw my throw flasher, and I put it way out there, and then I saw him turn way off in the distance, I kind of gave him some space and right before he got to the throw flasher I dove. He kind of stopped at the throw flasher just for a second. I closed that distance and put a shot in him. So Glad he's in the box. What do you think Kyle? Nicely done. Alright guys, in this clip you can see this is a real nice wahoo. He's coming in really chill, eating on some of the chum we've been throwing out. My buddy here takes a shot. And I guess he was a little bit further than he had anticipated, so you can see that shaft drop and hit him really low in the belly. You can hear him yelling here for, he needs a second shot. And you're going to see here in a second that this float just starts taking off. This fish, because it wasn't a really big vital hit, you know, he had a lot of fight left in him. You can see Jake here start swimming after this float. He's just taking this float with him. After chasing it for a few minutes, Jake decides to hop in the boat. We were going to chase the float down with the boat. While Milan kept an eye on the other divers. You can see this is probably about five minutes into the fight here and he is still running with that float. I got to give a big shout out to Koa. We originally used some cheap Amazon floats and they were working alright but they weren't really, you know, you couldn't pressurize them. We ended up going with these Koa floats and they're pretty expensive. First one we bought worked right, great. Second one we got had a leak when yeah. we got it. And I uh, reached out to their customer service and they provided us a new one. No questions asked. As you can see here, I gotta hop in the water. I need a second shot. Jake's gonna pull him up on the line. So I was able to just hop in with just a mask fin snorkel. Something I wanna point out here is when I shoot, look at my fins. I am not moving. I take that moment to really focus on how I'm aiming. And that's something you should really try to do when you're shooting at a blue water fish. You want to be as still as possible when you squeeze that trigger. Let's go! This is Jake's personal best fish. He does a better in-depth nice review one. of this on his channel. Go check him out. Jake's Offshore Adventures. He runs charters here and down in Isla Mirada. Great guy and couldn't recommend anyone else. That's my biggest one, bro. That's a 50 First pounder, drift, dude. two minutes in. Woo! That's how we go, baby! Woo -hoo! All right, Justin. Expectations only lead to disappointment. <laughs> I'm just along for the ride. So I'm gonna go straight from Jake's biggest fish to mine. Unfortunately, Jake's got one about three pounds bigger than mine, but 
I'll argue I got the better shot on this fish. You can see here there's two smaller fish straight ahead of me. I went ahead and already threw that throw flasher. I'm coming down. I start looking at the smaller fish and this big one just swims right to me. That shot was a little far, but I went right through just about both gills. And you can see he really didn't take off with the line that much. I really hurt him with that shot. Right here on the flasher. And you can see there's another one right on that throw flasher. Unfortunately, I don't want to lose this thing. We don't have too many of them. At least we didn't this day and... You know, this was only our second drift, so I'd take a dive. These are really the most dangerous dives. You're pretty hyped because you just shot a fish. Everybody's looking around at fish. Nobody's really watching you. Maybe we got two divers down. That throw flasher's been sinking for, you know, 45 seconds to a minute. And uh, you really got to take a deep dive while really excited. Um, so recovering that throw flasher can be pretty dangerous. Uh, don't recommend doing what I just did there. But I was saying he wasn't taking that buoy, but there he goes. I actually thought he got sharked right there. And if you look, the buoy is pretty slack now, so I thought we lost him. Hey, watch the line. Watch the line. He's a pretty good one. There were like four. They're not around right this second. I'm hoping they're going to chase him up. Here I am. I've got the fish almost up. Right under me is another nice freaking wahoo. I go ahead and I unclip that throw flash hey, right saved. Get over here. Fish is right there. I got him right in front of me, like five feet. See my throw flasher here. The fish is pretty interested. It kind of scoots off. Tyler's off to my left here. Dives and just... Fins were barely under the water when he squeezes that trigger and it was just a little too far. You saw how happy that fish was. He was just doing circles underneath me. Rule number one is be patient and don't pull that trigger until you know you're not getting a better shot. This fish really gave me a run for my money. Both of the other guys were messing around trying to reload. So I'm trying to get this fish in. Fortunately, I didn't need a second shot with this fish. He was a... Uh, uh, hit him pretty good right through the gills. Uh, really good holding shot. <laughs> This was my personal best fish so far at 40.1 pounds. Oh my god! Alright guys, in this clip you can see I have a wahoo in front of me. Kind of got the gun ready. I'm shaking the throw flash with my left hand, trying to bring him in that last couple of feet. You can see he's just kicking a little too hard. I decide instead of chasing this fish, I'm going to go straight up and get that throw flasher out ahead of him. You can see my buddy already threw his. It's there on the left. I put mine only a couple feet ahead of me. This fish just turns right around as soon as I stop chasing him, giving my buddy a beautiful shot. And really, if I hadn't, if I had kept chasing that fish, we would have had no opportunity at all. So that just goes to show, if you have a bad opportunity, don't push it. You know, your odds are better in, you know, giving that fish some space and seeing if he comes around. This next fish is actually the fish from the beginning of this video. Um, I'm going to walk you through why we miss this fish. You can see it's a beautiful shot. Just when he pulls that trigger, it just glides right over his back. So if you watch the slow mo, oh, God, I miss. 
back of the gun goes to the left, front of the gun goes to the right. And because my dad was shooting with one hand, he had that throw flasher off to the left. You can see this in my brother's view. He wasn't able to completely control that gun, and while the shaft was still in the gun, he torqued it just enough to miss the fish. Um, that just really good lesson there is when you're ready to shoot this fish, make sure you got both hands on the gun and just really focusing on that shot placement. This next clip, I, I'm kind of leaving it pretty raw. My brother's doing a dive and just hanging on to the flashers. Just to take a look at the bottom, you can see his hair flying all over the place. And just way out in the distance you can see these wahoo. And instead of coming up and throwing the throw flasher, he lets go of the, you know, the flasher rig and just starts slowly swimming towards him. And you can see he's pretty deep. He's probably been down 45 seconds at this point. These fish are still way out of range and swimming away from them. You can also hear this boat running in the background, and as we talked about earlier, the Wahoo really don't like that. You can just see three nice fish just lined up in front of him. He's actually closing this distance pretty good, but running out of air, really not the best of situations. But the interesting thing is here, he quits, and as soon as he turns to go to the surface, those fish do exactly the same thing. All three of them go straight to the surface. The issue is he doesn't have a throw flasher. But because he stopped chasing those fish, they swim right up to him. This fish is right at his feet. He takes a duck dive. The fish kind of turns, and before he's really able to steady that shot, just doesn't quite get lined up right. Those fish were happy. They were right under the boat, right under his feet. You know, if he had waited a couple more seconds, I would have been able to get him that throw flasher. This clip is my dad's view of Tyler. You can see Tyler's going down, takes a shot, and if you just look... He shot at a fish, and you could see it just for a second. What happens next is just incredible. You missed? So my dad turns around and you can see there's four wahoo right there. Takes a dive, there's a fifth wahoo. Starts lining up on one. Swims away a little bit, stays out of the range. You can see there's five, six, seven, eight, nine wahoo. Changes to go after this one, starts chasing it a little bit. It kicks a little bit away. My dad comes up. Takes a breath, tries to catch his breath. As you can imagine, we're used to seeing one or two fish a day, and probably another eight wahoo swim right underneath him. So he takes another dive. Man, and these fish are right here, and just before he's able to settle that shot, just doesn't happen. And again, both Tyler and my dad didn't have throw flashers on this drift, so one throw of a throw flasher and four or five of those wahoo would have been circling on it and it would have been over. Um, so that's a great lesson. Keep that throw flasher on you because you never know when something like that's going to happen. It's rough. Real rough. But unfortunately that's just how it is sometimes. You really don't get them every time. This is probably our third trip in a row of not getting one. It's the way wahoo fishing goes, you know, like today we started off with 12 boats out here and now there's only three of us diving for them. So I mean, it's either they know another place to do it or they're giving up and I mean, if we had given up earlier, we wouldn't have, you know, even had the shot we did. It's all about persistence and knowing when to come and doing the right thing and not missing. But it's just how it is. All right, I got to move the boat. Wahoo did not work. We're uh, we're out here at the boat parade. Merry Christmas, guys.